have um, these um, Q code cards, you can memo a gift as well, or if you're a member, you can also update your automated giving as well. Everything else will be on the screens that you need. By faith will lead the music, and everything else again, and that will be on the screens as well. But again, welcome, and we'll begin with our opening prayer. God of deliverance, you called Moses to be your hands, feet, and voice in a troubled world. Teach us how to work, walk, and speak your word in a troubled world. Amen. Our gathering song is Lord, I lift your name on high. And Cindy, you'll direct our postures. Do you want to stand? I mean, Mindy, do you want to stand or you're sitting? I feel like this is a stand-up song. I know you just yeah. got comfortable and down, but we got sign language happening. We've got just a good energy song. As you're able, you don't have Please be seated. And tonight's recovery reflection, daily contemplation. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not seen, but believing. Down through the ages, there have always been those who obeyed the heavenly vision, not seeing, but believing in God. And their faith was rewarded. So shall it be to you. Good things will happen to you. You cannot see God, but you can see the result of faith in human lives, changing them from defeat to victory. God's grace is available to all who have faith, not seen, but believing. With faith, life can be victorious and happy. Tonight's readings I've shortened because it is also the Feast of St. Francis and we just had the blessing of the animals in the parking lot. And so we've shortened, way, way, way shortened this past Sunday's reading. You wouldn't believe how long it was. And we'll also have the prayer of St. Francis as well. But our first reading is Exodus 3, 1 through 7. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horb, 
the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people. A prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, where there is hatred let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is dying that we are born to eternal life. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. I don't like to single out favorites but I have a favorite dog that's not mine. Chris Charco has a dog named Luke. And Luke is an incredibly good boy. When we were going for the sausage run for the Oktoberfest, we left Luke in the car with 500 raw sausages <laughs> while we went into a restaurant and had lunch. The sausages weren't touched. See, that's a good boy. <laughs> that is a great dog. I know, sadly, that my dog Arlo would have been sick by the time we got out of the car. Most dogs would be sick. Most dogs don't have that innate ability to be a good boy. St. Francis didn't either. We really don't know all that much about him because there's so much hearsay and legend and ecclesial myth. We really, really don't know what the truth really is concerning this saint, but we do know this, that he was born into incredible riches. He was also a soldier who wanted to receive glory in the battlefield. He was also a womanizer. He was all the things that the church did not want him to be. It's funny how some of us can have a conversion experience and have our lives changed completely around. And his life was so changed by God that he became the absolute opposite of what he had been before. In fact, he took a vow of poverty and gave absolutely everything he had away, much to the anger of his parents. And his life of simplicity, his life of poverty became very, very appealing, so appealing that it actually upset the church because he thought, okay, something is going to really go awry here. But he wasn't dissuaded by the powers that kept on saying, no, you can't do that, no, you can't do that, no, you can't do that. He chose instead to remain the good boy that God had made him to be. And in that arose so many legends of him taming a wolf that used to prey on people, and so the village would actually adopt this wolf and make him a pet and feed him. He preached to the birds, and the birds would land on him. He did all kinds of things that are hard to see if they are legend or if they are true, but what we do know is that he was the first ecologist. 
And he was the one that pointed out as a theologian that we are tied to nature and that everything in creation is related to us and therefore we are called to have the utmost respect for creation. The utmost respect for the animals, the utmost respect for weather, the utmost respect for the plants. He was a true, true ecologist out of his love from God and his love for God. He said, hey, we have to realize that we're not only connected to each other, but we're connected to the world and we have a calling to take care of it. You know, the prayer of the day was thanking us for the example of Moses using his feet and his hands and tongue to do the will of God. But Moses is just one of many examples, and St. Francis is one of many examples for us to emulate as well to say, hey, some way and somehow God has reached me, and when God reaches me, God changes me, and that change should continue to happen because his story was not one quick, I've been converted and everything is different right away. His faith, like ours, was a developing faith that took years and years and years and years for his practices and his faith to develop to the degree that it did, that it literally changed the entire world at that time. Now, it's interesting, too, because that prayer attributed to St. Francis is often one that I've also recited when I've gone to meetings. A lot of times people who go into the 11th step will also use this as their prayer to connect to what in the groups will say or what in our community will say is a higher power, but what we'll name as God. It's a gateway into seeking a relationship with God. And it's a wonderful prayer. Because if you noticed it, it puts God first and others before us. And realizing that in that mode of operation, that mode of thought of putting God first and others second, we're living out the greatest commandment. To love God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. When I look around this community of faith and other communities of faith that I've been in, I've seen a lot of people who are just, believe it or not, as holy and the sacred loving and God loving is what old St. Francis is. You might be saying, who me? And I'll be saying, yes, you. Because you're doing your best to live the faith. Sometimes we do ourselves a disservice if we compare ourselves to others. In fact, we always do ourselves a disservice if we compare ourselves to others. And we have to realize that we weren't born with everything Francis was born with. Part of his story, part of his journey is from where he came and how he came into this world. We can't own his story, but we can own our story. And we can also plead for those God sightings and for those changes that God needs to make in our lives. And we can also pray for the courage to live that life of faith that the world sees as different. Because believe me, they saw Francis as different and he was suspect. It's funny how things come full circle again. Because I think also, in this day and age, people of the church, people of faith, are seen as different, and are seen as suspect. And you know what? That's pretty cool. Because that means that some way and somehow, we're making a difference that the world is uncomfortable with. And really, why shouldn't it be? If you look at the world, what does it have to offer? Absolutely nothing. What does God have to offer? Absolutely everything. So let us rejoice that some people like Francis and like others here and like others we know have seen that and help us strive for that as well. And with that, what else can we say but to God be the glory now and forever. Amen. Our song tonight is Who Am I?
When you hear the petition, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with the words, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Surprising God, you have an uncomfortable habit of showing up where we least expect you, in a burning bush, in the face of an enemy, in a livestock feed trough, on a rough wooden cross. Turn our lives upside down with your radical love. Help us fully embrace your surprises even as we revel in the joy of being fully embraced by your all-encompassing grace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God in mystery, we are constantly amazed by the depth and breadth of your love. Over and over again, you turn our expectations inside out and upside down. And still, we don't understand the radical nature of your grace. We play by our own rules of justice, even when it means excluding those we are called to love and defend. In our darkest moments, we doubt if we are worthy of your trust. God, help us remember that you give us all the tools we need, that through the solid foundation of your love, we find the strength to follow your call as true disciples of Jesus Christ. Surprise us again, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, the God who brought our ancestors out of slavery will not desert us. God has promised to be with us throughout all generations. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice, for God is with us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God who speaks from a burning bush and through many other and various ways, we ask for your direction and guidance as we minister to the community. Help us to see what you see, to hear what you hear, and to feel what you feel, so we may be open to you working through us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. We offer you now these gifts. Take our money and use it to bring comfort to those in need. Take our service and use it to bring justice to those who are oppressed. Take our witness and use it to bring good news to those who hunger for hope. Take our lives and use them for our very salvation. We pray through Jesus Christ, the one whom we follow, even to the cross. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
We'll continue now with, again, our very, very, very brief offering. You won't believe how quick it is. It's done. Whoops, uh, we'll go on to the next dialogue. God of grace, you call us to wash and be clean. You offer us a simple solution to our dis-ease. In those times when our pride blocks our sight of your graciousness, for those times we grow too sure of our own importance, Here is the good news. God is willing to cleanse us from our pride, our blindness, and our stubborn insistence in having things our way. Through God's grace, we are washed and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This blood is new. New blood, this is the blood of the new covenant shed in my, I'm going to start all over. I used to know these words by heart. Okay. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, this cup's new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray as he taught us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My helpers come forward, please. For those who are using communion kits, this is the body of Christ broken for you. You may go ahead and eat. And again, for those same saints, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. You may go ahead and drink.
Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight in our hearts. Strengthened by his food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. A couple of announcements. Um, first of all, we have a Red Cross blood drive here tomorrow. We also have a ministry fair set up tonight so people can see what ministries we have to offer. And there are treats on the table, so you can help yourself. But after some time of talking and fellowship, if you could help us, please uh, take the tables down and the chairs down to put them away so Daniel has less work to do tomorrow. He'd really, really appreciate it, and we can get the place ready for blood drive. But please do stay after worship for a time of fellowship and to check out our ministries as well. And if you wish, there's also an open meeting tonight at 8 o'clock here, too. And if any of your pets were missed during the blessing before worship service, let me know and we can bless them after this worship service as well. And we have bags of apples outside. I don't know where they're from. I'm assuming they're from our trees back there. I don't know. They were left here. Lots of apples. Feel free to use them. Um, I'm sure if they're from our trees, they're organic, and thus they have extra protein in the form of worms in them. So uh, be careful with them as well. But anyway, you know, we want them out of here. Otherwise, we'll return them to the ground for compost soon. Okay, and Chad, did I ever contact you? Yes, I did. We're on next with Chad. You're going to introduce the video yeah. after this later. Um, good evening. Uh, I'm Chad Om. I've been a member here since 2015. Uh, today, we're pleased to announce the kickoff of our 2024 stewardship program, Two Pies, One Target. Uh, so in just a minute, we're going to watch two of our own saints uh, instruct us on the church budget and how the congregation uses the financial gifts that you give them. Um, one of those saints is Right over there, Lenny. We use the term saints loosely around here. <laughs> uh, but before we do that, I'd like you to reflect on uh, ministries that you'd uh, like to see continued here and new ones that you think would be a good idea. So just take a minute to think about that. That's good. <laughs> um, so today we heard in our reading about the midwives, and we didn't. We skipped that part. <laughs> but anyways, just trust me, what these five women did may seem small compared to the entire story of deliverance, but the event of deliverance had to begin with them putting their core belief into action. So stewardship is best defined as what we do after we confess that we believe. What we do with our money, time, and talent matters. So we have opportunities before us to act by sharing generously our treasure, time, and talent so those who are in bondage can be freed. Uh, please join me in increasing one pie and devouring another so that others may know the freedom that com comes with being friends with God. Okay, so now go ahead and play the movie. Well, hello there again. I know that you are very happy to see me again and that you need no reminder of who I am. Lenny Erickson, television personality, actor, singer, guitarist, Robert's Pride and Joy, and most famous citizen, and I also bless Cross Lutheran with membership there. You're welcome. Well, if it isn't Lenny Erickson, the good twin, what brings you to my home on the range? The shooting range, that is. <laughs> Seriously, though, you better have a great reason for breaking my concentration and relaxation. Your being here is about as strange as the Baptist in me sitting quiet through an entire Lutheran church service. <laughs> well, actually, I did want to speak to you about church. 
Oh, now what did that Packer fan do? I've told him, no more Lambo leaps after the sermon. I've also said, be nicer to the band and pretend to be a fan of Left Suck for the cookie fair. No, no, it isn't about him. Well, directly. And if you ever need any muscle involved in correcting Pastor John, just let my evil twin Lanny know. He wears purple for a reason. Uh, no, I just wanted to ask about the church budget and to see if we are on target. <laughs> Forgive the obvious pun. <laughs> You're forgiven. And thank you for asking. And the answer is both yes and no. Yes, the budget is on target as its goal is to make Jesus known to the community and the world and to treat our employees fairly. But no, it's not always on goal as people sometimes equate it with what's in the bank. Sometimes or some months, all is well. And well, other months, it's if I just completely miss a target instead of shooting it out of the sky. Here, let me tell you a story. Hold on, Pam. If anyone's going to tell a story, I should. After all, <laughs> I'm a star of stage and screen and a professional actor. But how can you tell a story that you do not know? Uh, sh 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 let me worry about that. Once upon a time, well, Actually, in the present, there was a little church in Roberts, Wisconsin that has a big, big mission ahead of them. And the members, except for my evil twin, are all kind and wonderful and extremely good looking. I like this. Keep going. But don't forget to mention how gifted and smart their president is. <laughs> this isn't about you. It's about them and me. As I was saying, it's a small congregation with a really gifted band that I am in, a terrific council, awesome committees, and a great staff that loves Jesus and the congregation, and together all of them serve God, the community and entire world, but serving also involves a financial aspect or budget, and sometimes that reality is not always passionately remembered. Go on. So far, you've got it right. But in their defense, budgets and amounts can be about as exciting as watching me shoot non-existent targets. Mm -hmm. Well, we must get rid of the idea that the budget is columns and numbers and expenses, but instead is God at work and is also it is about God's people. I am not going to call God boring or his people boring either. You've got that right. The church is the people. And so when we set a budget, it's mostly about the people. There's some building stuff too, but really mostly it's just about the people. This includes our members, our children, our adults, the people of Roberts, people everywhere, and our staff. Every dollar and penny received is more than just trying to fairly compensate our staff. Though that's really the largest piece of our budget pie. Mm. Yum. I could go for some right now. You're as bad as Pastor John. But I have a pie right here. You do? I do. Southern hospitality knows no bounds. We always come prepared. Is pecan okay? <laughs> Actually, let's use this pie as an illustration of our general budget. About three quarters of this pie would be the salaries for our staff. That includes Pastor John, Denise, Amanda, Daniel, Kathy, Mindy, and Barb. They're really the largest piece of this whole pie. The remaining quarter of the pie is divided by the committees, office supplies, utilities, property expenses, and mission support to the wider church. Now, our staff is not receiving extravagant salaries by any means, nor are our committees or any 
part of the pie is out of lack. It's just the way it is. The more we give, the more we can do beyond making sure that our employees receive compensation for their ministries. So what committees receive the funding from the budget as the budget is realized? Stewardship, REC, worship, CYF, property? Yep, all of them. Plus, the band can get some music, and so can the choir. Sometimes our AV needs a little tweaking, and sometimes we need to make energy-saving measures to lower our utility bills. Not one penny gets wasted. And if the saints at Cross gave more, well, there'd just be more pie to go around. And if I did not like pecan pie, is there a, another? <laughs> of course. I just happen to have a good old-fashioned sweet potato pie here. Is this pie also a metaphor? We superstars are, are quick to catch on. <laughs> yep, this pie represents our mortgage. We want everyone to dig in and devour it. So what goes to paying off the building can someday go towards other ministries and projects. And we are so far behind in keeping up with it, it's like Abraham Lincoln and Robert E. Lee are still on speaking terms. Mm. Ah, so the targets are here are to increase the size of the pecan pie so more can be done and to finish off the sweet potato pie so that more can be done. Last year, we asked for everyone to increase their giving by the cost of one cup of coffee per week. I think now we need to still ask for that, but also for a piece of pie to go toward the mortgage. Yup, coffee for the general fund and pie for the mortgage. And this president will breathe easier if those targets are hit. Well, even my evil twin will do his part. Let's hope and pray that the others will too. But right now, I see the paparazzi on the horizon, so I must fly. Good luck hitting all of your, I mean, our targets. And you are most welcome for my visit. Driver! Thank you, Lenny. <laughs> Please rise as able for the last song. Um, these are the days of Elijah.
So in three, God is at work in you. Yeah. Yeah.